Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to talk about the best approximation theorem. Specifically, the best approximation theorem helps us to characterize or describes one of the key properties of our orthogonal projection. We're going to talk about that orthogonal projection being the best approximation to another vector from a subspace. Let's look at the details. So the best approximation theorem says that if we're given some subspace w, so let w be subspace of Rn, and let y be some vector in our subspace. So if we look at my picture, I have a line, this is a line in R2. So this could be considered a subspace of R2. So this would be my w. And then I have some vector that's in R2. This would be my vector that's just in R2, not necessarily in my subspace w. Then we'll talk about the projection, y hat is the projection of y onto w. And if I were to sketch out that projection, that projection vector would look like this vector, where that is a right angle. What the best approximation theorem says is that this projection vector is the closest point or the closest vector in w to y i.e., if we wanted to approximate the value of the vector y from a vector in w, the y hat would be that best vector. So what do we mean by best? We mean is the error is the smallest. So how do I measure the error? I measure the error by measuring the distance from y to whatever I'm approximating with. So in this case, I would have this value is the error in approximating with the projection, and this represents the error in approximating with any other vector v in my subspace. And this statement says that the error in using the projection vector is the smallest. It minimizes my error. So we can kind of see that from our picture directly. In R2, this distance, this error in my approximation, well, here's my vector y minus y hat. And so the length of that vector is what we're calling the error. So if I took any other vector in W, for instance, let's look at this vector. We'll call that maybe V1. And we'll call the big vector here V2. Well, then the error in approximating with V2 would be this length, which we can clearly see is bigger than the magnitude of Y minus Y hat. Now, if I approximate with V1, I'd be talking about this distance. And clearly that is also bigger than this perpendicular distance. So just these pictures kind of help us justify that the statement is true. Now let's look at a specific example to calculate some values. So if we grab some specific examples, we're just going to calculate some of these errors to help us feel confident in that statement. This is not a proof by any means, just a specific example. So here I have a subspace, which is the span of the vector 2, 1. So that would be this line. I have the vector 2, 1 right here, and the span of that vector is this line. And then I have the vector y, which is the vector 3, 4. And so if I want to find the vector along this line that best approximates the vector 3, 4, I would be looking for y hat, which is the projection of y onto my subspace w. And to calculate that, I would look at the dot product between y and one of the basis vectors here, some vector in that line. So if I take that dot product, I will get 6 plus 4 divided by the dot product of this vector with itself. That would be 4 plus 1 times that vector. 6 plus 4 is 10 divided by 4 plus 1, which is 5, gives us a value of 2. 2 times this vector looks to be the vector 4, 2. And if I kind of sketch 4, 2, sure enough, it looks like it is that projection. And so this could be my best approximation to y. Now, how good is that approximation? Well, I could calculate the error. The error in my approximation would be this distance. It would be the magnitude of y minus y hat. So in this case, that is the distance between my vector 3, 4 minus my vector 4, 2. If I subtract those two vectors, I get negative 1 and 2. And the magnitude of that vector is the square root of 1 plus 4, or root 5. Now, if I thought about other vectors, so for instance, maybe I could take this vector, 2, 1, or this vector out here, which might be something like the vector 6, 3. Both of those vectors are also in W. But if I thought about the error in using those as my approximation, 
I would have the the first one would be the the error in approximating with 6.3, for instance. If I calculate that, well, I'd have y minus 6.3 would give me a vector that would look like negative 3 and 1. And the magnitude of this vector should be the square root of 9 plus 1, or the square root of 10. So I can see that that error is certainly bigger than my error in approximating with the projection vector. What if I approximate it with the vector 2, 1? Then I would have y minus that vector 2, 1. And if I subtracted those two vectors, I would get the magnitude of a vector which would be 1, negative 3. And the length of this vector is also the square root of 10. So once again, that is also larger than the error and approximated with the projection vector. So this kind of helps us, once again, reinforce the fact that the best approximation to y in this subspace w really is that projection vector. And that concludes this video on the best approximation theorem. Thank you.